Hello everyone, it is December 13th, 2022. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday! Welcome to this week's episode, episode 250. So today, I'm going to teach you this, this very simple arrangement of Carol of the Bells. Uh, Carol of the Bells, of course, is, has this, such a mesmerizing... That little theme that just keeps on going on and on throughout the piece. And of course, this year, it, it, it means a lot more or something different than it has in the past, because now I think we're all very much aware that it was written by a Ukrainian. And yeah, that means something different this year. And so this arrangement then is something you can get for free just by signing up to my email newsletter. Let me play through it for you perhaps first, and then I'm going to talk through it and teach it to you. So that was with a repeat. You could certainly do it shorter without the repeat. And of course you could mix and match and, and do lots of different things with that. But let me talk you through it. So on the first page and on a lot of the second page as well, the right hand does this little bells pattern. And actually before I talk about that, let me just mention that we're in the key of B flat, the two flats, so just the A's are up, but we're starting with the E and F up. So E natural, F sharp above middle C. So these are up as well as all the A's. So this, B, A, B, G, for me, I finger it one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You could certainly do one, two, one, three, one, two, one, three, one, two, one, three, if that felt more comfortable. I choose not to connect across the bar line. So this is all connected. One, the thumb goes back, two, one, two off one two one two i'll come off at the end of each group at each bar you could certainly keep connecting so connect back and in some ways that's a more secure way to do that and certainly one worth trying for me i like the sound of not connecting because then that b gets to ring a little bit longer as opposed to. And I like that I like a chance to kind of come up and relax a little bit and come back down. It's not that fast. We can come off if we want. But anyway, two potential options to play around with. And with something like this, where the right hand is doing this pattern throughout so much of it, it's certainly a great thing to practice just with the right hand and really groove that. Really make sure you are happy with the fingering you're using one two one two or one two one three happy with are you coming off or connecting across the bar line and then just kind of groove that so that you can do that without paying too much attention to the right hand so then the left hand is going to play a scale g f e d again you could certainly connect all of those I kind of like that, again, the sound is a little bit different maybe with two, 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 two. So up to you, but a scale. 
and then again we repeat that. Then the left hand's gonna go always thumb on B, uh, always thumb on D, and we'll still do that scale. So the first note of each bar, starting here in bar 13, is G, F, E, D, but we always respond with a D after that. So G, D, F, D. In the music I've got 4 1 now on this seventh. Uh, I may have played it sometimes with three and one because especially on this slightly smaller spacing that feels quite easy to do um, and there's nothing wrong with doing it with three and one it's just the typical fingering for a seventh or a greater so seventh octave ninth whatever is with four and one so three one three one perhaps four one and I would say definitely unless you have a very small harp and very large hands four one on the octave so this is together Together, right, right, together, together, right, right, together, together, right, right, together, together, right, right. If that coordination feels challenging, it can potentially be useful to try and, for example, tap. The rhythm that the left hand is going to play, which maybe that doesn't feel any easier but sometimes it can feel it be a little bit easier than coordinating fine doing different notes and you get the sense of together right right so i mean together together right right great so we do that twice and that's it that's the first page and that's pretty much all the piece except for these next uh, three lines on the start of the second page. So now we're going to get a lever change. So we play a, a G fifth down here and we find a G fifth on the right hand, D and G, right? And play. So one, three, two, two, switching to two on those repeated notes. Left hand goes up, changes that E to natural and stays on the lever. Hold the lever still. Thumb now instead of on D is up to E, so it's a, it's a sixth, E to G, still G on the bottom. So we went D, E, G, 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 again, one, three, two, two, change the lever down because we're going to play that E now as a flat. Three in a row starting on F. Find four in a row starting on G with a slightly different rhythm. So we had one, two, three, one and two, three. Find those same four notes in a row, but so my personal preference would be to connect into the G at the start of bar 25, start of this bar, but then come off. could try and place everything might feel more secure but again on this longer note it's kind of nice to come off and then find again that one two three four and play the thumb twice so this is a little bit challenging and again you might practice this one one two three four here's this G fifth again three in a row starting from the D we just played but the thumb twice in a row again Right back to two on the C. We've moved down to a sixth now, part of a C chord, E to C. We just play the C, we're gonna play it again. And again, I would, in this case, place two and one, but play two twice in a row. Two and four. So this little bit, so one, 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 two, three, four. Now we're gonna do one, two, three. One, one, two, three, two. Two, two, one, two, four. Two, two, two. Uh, to me, the, the, of course, this is much trickier than the rest where we just get to go. So let's try it again from the top of the page. Change. Back down again. Three in a row. Four in a row. Back to that G. One, one, two, three, four, three in a row. Two, 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 one, two, four, two, two, two. So, so. And now 
we get a nice scale. So we have these accidentals already set. We've never played them. They're already set to E natural and F sharp. That's great. Just a 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1 scale with a G third here, G and B. So 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2. Connect to 2 and 1, 2 and 3. 1, 2, 3. And now this is the same as when we first brought the left hand in, that descending scale starting from G. You could go back to the first page and start on bar 9 again, and do this again, and then this, and then the bit we just did, D. Or you could simply go on, so the second time through at least, we've gone from bar 33. Here's this, always going up to the D, but walking down. Up to this treble clef, D. Softer. A little bit risky. A harmonic at the end. And unfortunately, I, I really should have this a little bit higher because to get in a good position for this, I need to uh, crouch down so it's a little bit, a little bit awkward. But harmonics, of course, are always a slightly risky way to end a piece because it's the last thing you play. So if it's not a good harmonic, then that's the last thing we hear. But they can be a really great way to end a piece, too. And so just to have that one harmonic there, and again, we're back in the bass clef at this point. Uh, you could, of course, do something like that, any sort of ending. And again, you could, you could pick and choose. You could do more of this towards the end. We could do this quite a few times, getting slower and softer. All sorts, of, all sorts of possibilities, right? And I would say I didn't mark any dynamics in this, but certainly, oh, except at the end to get softer, right, and to slow down, but the beginning can be soft as well. These bells in the distance, getting a little bit louder, louder. And maybe fading out a little bit. So certainly a, a possibility that lots of playing around with dynamics. So, so there it is. I hope you enjoy it. And actually, before I finish, though, I want to do a little bit of looper pedal fun because this is a piece that is perfect for a looper pedal. So I have my little electric harp, this harp E, plugged into a looper pedal, plugged into my amp. So I'm going to try and loop this. So I'm going to play a couple times just to get it going. Then I'm going to record two bars as a loop. So I'm going to probably play two bars and then start recording and stop and grab that two-bar section. So. careful because these, I can't play these except on this scale because they're not set to the right bit. Though of course in this case if I'm looping I might have time to change them down.
anyway, a great piece to play around with with a looper pedal if you happen to have one of these little harpies or a similar electric harp and a looper pedal. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you want the sheet music, you can get it for free just by signing up to my email newsletter, which is probably the best way as well to sort of stay on top of what I'm doing. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you in two weeks for another episode of Harp Tuesday. Cheers. Thank you.